Okay. Hey. Hey, hey what's up, everybody? Hey guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Old Reader, New Readers. Tonight, we are talking about Umbrella Academy. This book right here by Gerard Way and one of my favorite artists, Gabriel Ba. So, to lead this discussion, I've got, well, no, not to lead, but with me, I've got Amanda, the new reader. Say hi, Amanda. Oh, hey, I was answering Philip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you, you can do it on here. Come on, Philip. Damn straight, Philip Evans. And Ever we've got Maddie with us. They are both the hey, new guys. reader. I am your old reader. I have read this before. And this is actually my third time, or actually, this is only my second time reading this book. I only I read it when it originally came out in 2007. So, uh, really quick, though, I want to give a quick <laughs> shout out to Jesse Say What? Because that man has been here since like seven o'clock in the afternoon, which is crazy. <laughs> which is when I, this episode went live. So that that's that's really kind. Thank you, yes, thank, thank you, you, Jesse. And to all the people in the chat, make havoc, Philip Evans, Ray, all you guys, much love. So, yes. Amanda, kick it off. What are we talking about? What is this? What is Umbrella Academy? This soon-to-be TV series. Um, yeah, on Netflix, and I think it actually airs in a couple of weeks so um on netflix um yeah, so umbrella academy written by gerard way and i wish i had read this back in 2007 because i was such a huge michael Book romance fan me um, too <laughs> oh gosh buddy uh he that was i there's one concert i've never been to and i've always wanted to and i'm never gonna get to go to since they're broken up anyway target uh, yes so um umbrella academy is about a group of seven um, extraordinary individuals who are all born on the same day where with another uh, other uh, I can't do the math but with basically with 43 children born on the same day to women who showed nine, no signs of pregnancy and they were adopted by this um, space alien disguised as an inventor named Mr. Hargreaves who is also known as the monocle and when asked why he had adopted these seven children he said to save us all from the apocalypse so um, that's kind of how issue one, um, the day the Eiffel Tower went berserk, that's how that issue kind of starts off. And once we do that, we cut to about 10 years later. The kids are about 10 years old. And like the title of this uh, issue says, the Eiffel Tower indeed does go berserk. And these seven children all of a sudden show up to stop it. And you start to see some of their powers. Um, for instance, you have... Uh, child number three, which is Rumor, and or Allison, I think is her name. And it is she, Allison. Allison, and she has the ability to con. She uses rumors, her like words, to convince people to do things, right? And then you have Space Boy or um, Luther, who's number one, and you have another other ones, and you see them fight the Eiffel Tower, which turns out to be a spaceship that was being controlled by the original architect of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> mm -hmm. Such an interesting take. Um, and you start to see little snippets of personalities and relationships and stuff start to develop in this part. And then it cuts to, what, about 20 years later? They've split up. You And it's really clever in this issue, and they do it throughout. They have little newspaper clippings that can kind of give you clues as to what went on over those 20 years. For instance, one of them, um, well, that's it later on, but one of them passes away. Um, you find out the space boy was, he goes into space, has a tragic accident, and then Hargreaves attaches his head to a gorilla body. Um, and you learn about all these characters and how they split up, and then they have to come back together because Mr. Hargreaves has passed away. And that's pretty much where number uh, issue one is. And you also realize that one of them, number five, who apparently was time traveling, has <laughs> spent all this time away and shows back up 20 some odd years later. And he's still 10 years old. Right. It's also good to point out that like number seven doesn't have power. So you have seven kids. So there's supposed to be super power. They're selected, but only six have power. So the seventh, whose name is Vanya. Vanya. I believe she's gonna be played by Ellen Page in the in the show. I think so. Um, right. She does not have any power, so she's always just kind of like left out of everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's supposed to dress the same way, but she's not there to be helpful or do anything really. Um, so we have those kids, 
But yeah, so that puts us at the end of ep- issue one, right? Yes. And you it had some interesting characters like Mr. Pogo, which is, or Dr. Pogo, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. the, the uh, genetically enhanced monkey. And which is great. We, yeah, which is awesome. I was like, this is a great character. Um, <coughs> it reminded me of, there's a, I can't re- think of it right now, but I know I've watched something else that had a genetically modified monkey that spoke. And Detective I don't know what it is. Chimp from Maybe yeah, so I it of- Or else, no, you no, actually, this is bad. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of the chimpanzees in um, Madagascar, the ones who were sipping oh, the stop. coffee. <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> <No. Nope. laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. <laughs> so much kids movies. Yeah, so we, we, have, we have the chimp, and then we've got mom. Yes. Hargreaves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and she's an interesting one, especially as we learn later. It's very interesting and yes. odd. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think issue one pretty much sets up what we're going to get in the next five issues, right? Yep. Um, so you have that, and then it kind of moves on to issue two. And what you have there is um, they start to reunite because they get all of them get word that they're – father if some of them call him father some of them don't Doc, uh, mr hargreaves that he um has passed away so they all start to come back and mm-hmm. that's when you get number one reunites with his sister number three allison you find out that she had left and had a child got married got divorced then you see number six's statue I'm a, that's his statue that they show in that episode monster and so, yes the monster um Hold on one second. The horror. Yes, the, the horror. Horror, horror, that was it. Yeah, horror, thank you. Yeah. I forget which one died because it's so unimportant. Yeah. yeah. It's, which, I, I, I was hoping I it would be more important, but I guess it wasn't. Later on. Uh, no, you're doing a good well, job so far. I think so that's far. what's neat about this book, too, and that's something we'll, we'll discuss as we keep going, is that, like, there's a lot going on. but yes. And you think, like, oh, this must matter, and this must mean something, mm-hmm. but it doesn't necessarily you know, like a lot of these big events and things, like they don't really matter as are, as we are right now, and that that might change as we continue, um, and as the series continues because it is continuing currently, I believe. But yeah, it was on hiatus for about a decade. Yeah, Gerard just and... like gives you a whole bunch of stuff, right? So it's just like here is all this information, but as of what we have so far, especially volume one, like it doesn't. So, uh, between not... issues. Important. Issues one and three, you kind of get flashbacks too of little things that have happened, mm-hmm. like uh, when Rumor was tortured, or yeah, uh, oh, the boy, right? That that is his code name, mm-hmm. boy. When he yeah. travels to the future and he gets to be an old man, but now he's trapped in the body of a ten-year-old. I interesting characters, yes, uh, which we will talk yeah. about later. So yeah, let's finish up the synopsis so we can actually dive into the meat of the book and sure. what we liked so, and what we all thought. Exactly. So what we get, so I think one of the biggest storylines that you see in the first three issues um, that ends at issue three is Vanya's storyline. So she is obviously the one who in the beginning uh, is up there, like Maddie said, she has no powers, but she can play the violin. She leaves. She apparently writes a book about her life with the Umbrella Academy, um, kind of an expose memoir, if you will. And she is recruited or she is contacted by the, I'm probably going to mispr- mispronounce it, the Orchestra Verdement. Tay? Hey, <laughs> <Maybe laughs> Verdement? I'm probably going to mispronounce it. That sorry. sounds great. I think yeah, you did a great job. Um, and they want to use their music, the Apocalypse Suite, to destroy the world. Name of the book. And, name of the book. And so she uh, initially refuses and leaves only to after the events with Dr. Terminal's answer, his whole, um, in issue three, when he attacked the carnival, his last thing as Mr. Hargreaves passed away, um, she decides to go back and she agrees to join the orchestra. And that is probably where we get some of the, some very powerful stuff. And that's an issue four, which is called Baby, I'll Be Your Frankenstein. And side note, all of these, for the most part, remind me of My Chemical Romance titles. (laughs) They could have oh, been. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sorry. Um, so issue four, we get to see what the orchestra orchestra does to her. They experiment on her because they say she has this great power that Mr. Hargreaves didn't even know about. And they use it to unleash and she becomes the white violin. 
And Remember, that po- was Pogo is the one that told her that she was special. Yes. Well, he would know. And then you, at the same time, you have Dr. Pogo, number five, sitting in the cafe, and they get attacked by some men in, with laser guns. And we don't see what happens to them with that until issue five, where pretty much number five kills all of them. Like, just... Has in a very violent stuff. way. Very violent way. That shakes the uh, poor lady, tr- the poor waitress to her core, pretty much. <laughs> Um, you also have some interesting stuff. Um, you have, uh, what is it, number two, Agent 00.02, <laughs> um, or Kraken, or not Kraken. Um, yeah, the Kraken. Yeah, yeah Kraken. they have, he's talking to an Inspector Lupo, and um, they're investigating the crime scene. And you also have number one and number three, Allison and Luther, proclaiming their love for each other. Because you get hints of that early on that they had a crush on each other. And they finally, you know, tell them how they feel about each other. They kiss, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, I think that one ends with number five putting on the monocle of Mr. Um, Hargreave. And it shows you what, real, like, how a, really, a person really is or the inside of them, I think. Because he sees what actually happened to Dr. Pogo. And it, it shocks him so much he faints. Mm-hmm. So that's where issue five leaves off. Are we good so far? We want to keep going? You're uh, good. Yeah, yeah. Let's wrap it okay. up. <laughs> Let's Why just wrap it up. Left? Yes. Um, so, okay. Season, and issue five also ends with the white violin going to attack the house, the Umbrella Academy's house. Yeah, so that's, then you where, have, that's where she yeah, kills Mr. Pogo. And Mr. Pogo. Beautiful little uh, brain Ugh. splattered everywhere. And that's when, yeah, that's when he puts on the monocle and sees what happened. And exactly. everybody's like, what happened? So you have Seance and Rumor and Space Boy and the boy mm-hmm. teaming up with Kraken to go and take out their sister, the White, yep. now known as the White Violin. And their only thing, I guess, to do is to kill her. So Pretty much. Well, take and it, does she, take does it from she there, really Amanda. Die? No, does no, she take really it. die? Yeah. Oh, okay. Take, Sorry. Take it from so, there. Yeah. So they, so they end up having to kill her or they you know, they think that's what they have to do. They end up paralyzing her, um, in the, and they all suffer something. Number three, during the attack, her throat is slashed, and l- number one, Luther has to rush her to the hospital to save her, but she ends up never being able to speak again because of it. Um, and I think it was Seance is the one who pretended or had invoked Mr. Hargreaves' mm-hmm. spirit, if you will, and that's mm-hmm. how they ended up stopping number seven he pretended to be their father and used that psychological torment against her pretty right. much and that was able to stop her and um at the end they all or the remaining ones who are still alive that aren't damaged return to the academy and everything is destroyed so excellent excellent okay that was a really good uh description of everything that happened (laughs) without you know i mean honestly it's very uh it's it's a pretty easy to follow story there's a lot of things like maddie said thrown at you yes but it's one that you can pick up pretty easy now we are giving a copy away by the way to some lucky viewer tonight amanda's gonna ask a question and the first person that gets it right will win this (laughs) copy of not this one that one the one 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 (laughs) of umbrella academy that's right. So, uh, let's let's finish this out. Uh, I'll, I'll go first, really quick, and then I'll, I want to hear what you two thought about uh, the story. Yeah, I want to I want to talk about the art because Gabriel Ba is one of my favorite mm-hmm. favorite artists ever since Day Tripper uh, and the stuff he did for Casanova. So I was really excited uh, to see him on this book when it first came out. I'll show you some of the art here. It's gorgeous. It's, it's Magnolo-ish, right? It's very cartoonish and hyper-realistic. And if you're going to have a guy design your gorilla body Man. and a guy and He's head, the one to do it. <laughs> this is one of the few guys that can pull it off without making it look too hokey, right? Because then you have like right. that – like I saw that um, – showed that shot of Pogo getting his brains well, blown out. I mean that's so... ridiculous, but nobody has that many brains. Yes. Um Another thing I wanted to point out is, God damn, I miss James Jean on covers. He was the oh, guy that did beautiful. the um, the covers for Fables. 
It has oh, the most yeah, those are beautiful. the most expensive piece of artwork ever sold was by James Jean. It was the covers of the Fables one thousand was in one thousand and one nights. Mm-hmm. This guy, really? it, oh my god, just oh, I miss him on covers. I, I the the cover he's the one that did all six covers, and then he did the special free comic book day cover. But Gabriel Ba and James Jean in this read through were the saving grace of this book for me. What did you oh, two think? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I definitely agree because like his art definitely lends itself to this story completely. It still gives you that nice dark vibe, but still keeps the comedy that Gerard Way is definitely putting in there. You know, because it's it's, it's, a, it's a nice subtle subtlety to it, but it's just it's still it's very dark. There's a lot of dark themes. There's a lot of like gory themes, of course, which yes. is very Gerard Way. Um, <laughs> it is. <laughs> But also, there's a, there's a, there's a humor in it, you know. This like the, it's the very tongue in cheek, yeah. yeah, are very humorous in, in the way that they're designed and put together, despite everything that they're going through. Mm-hmm. Um, it almost felt like if you were trying to make this, it's like watching a Wes Anderson film for me. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I felt with it. You mean the <laughs> the sister of? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, no, like the, yeah, yeah, exactly. With the narration <laughs> style and how these characters um, were were designed because they're very interesting. All of them, they're all very different. Mm-hmm. It just, I really like the story a lot. Um, I'm really excited to see what else we get from Gerard Way with this. Um, it's beautiful. And I mean, this, these two are meant to work together. When it I comes agree. To part of the story. Yeah. And I wouldn't have it any other way. And I honestly, if I could just keep them together for all their projects, it'd be great. Oh, that'd be awesome. And I, well, I agree with you because I think the art lends to the aesthetic of it. And I can't imagine any other art fitting this story or no. fitting what Gerard Way was trying to do with this story. Because honestly, because, you know, you're a Michael Romans fan, I'm a Michael Romans fan. This is what I would envision someone from MCR would write. This is exactly yeah. what I envision. This is perfect. And I wish I had read it back in 2007 when it came out. Um, but everything about it was fantastic. The themes and undertones. I mean, it's definitely not for kids. Um, it's, no. It has a lot of nuances to it which I thought was excellent. And yeah, that tongue in cheek feel of the humor and just some of the opposites and co- contradictions and things like that. I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And what's great is that there are still little mysteries to me that make me want to, I need to see volume two because I need to see what happens next. And that maybe, I don't know if anyone else in the chat has read further than volume two, maybe it's, well, Mandy, you're going to be disappointed. But um, <laughs> for me, there's still mysteries like that. Maybe they don't get solved. Maybe they're just supposed to stay mysteries, but there's still mysteries that I want to explore or still parts of these characters. I want to explore that I found so fascinating. Um, Cause it is, I, I love team ups anyways. I always think those are my, some of my favorite stories because you get to see a lot of character and personalities come together. And I think that's when stories get really interesting. Um, you know, I'm all for personal quest, but when you get a bunch of characters having to interact and there's all those tensions of familial bonds and relationships to me, that is what makes a story just extra and go above me on. So I, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Especially number five and his like, no bullshit. I'm back from the, I'm back from time, but I'm an old man, a little kid's body. I love that. I want to know. So who's gonna good. <laughs> I cannot man, wait to is- rough. Yeah, it's so rough too. I, I love characters that, that go through stuff like that because it's yeah. really sad. It is, but he's so <laughs> sarcastic about it all and sardonic. It's so great. Oh, I love it. So, Omar, how did you feel reading this? Yeah, video? yeah. I'm how curious. Did, how do you like it the first time you read it? And how did you like it now? Um, well, the first time I read it, I, I didn't listen to my chemical romance, uh, but a friend of mine did, and he was like, he was so excited about it. And actually, it was when we had our show about heroes. And he was like, oh, we all got to read it. We all got to review it. And the first issue came out and then the free comic book day. And we eventually reviewed the whole series. I absolutely fell in love with it. I bought into the hype, maybe. I don't know. I, I want it more like you guys. Mm-hmm. I I was like, oh, my God, this is exactly what, you know, everything I've ever read in the past. Like Doom Patrol mixes with X-Men. It's so great because he borrows heavy from Doom Patrol. And he oh, writes absolutely. it now, too, right? Or yeah. he is, he's yeah. writing, writing the current it, right? run. Yeah which mm-hmm. uh, I think it was on hiatus for a while. Yeah. Rereading it, though, um, I don't think I'm on that same boat anymore. I think uh-huh. I had a lot of issues with it. 
Matt, I don't know why. I think mainly because we just got finished reading Crisis on Infinite Earths, and that was so dense, and, and, and there was a lot to it. This feels like nonsense at times, because – and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this. This is the first time I've re reread a book that I'm like, I don't think I like this as much as I used to. Um, there are interesting characters, and there's interesting things that happen. But I feel like he just kind of wrote ideas down, like description of characters, and that's all we got. We didn't get any depth between that. Like, uh, there's all these nonsensical things that are happening all the time. I get it. You want to be witty. You want to, you yeah. know, you you want to be Grant Morrison. But guess what? You can't. That's that's what Grant Morrison is. Grant Morrison. What a you shame! Grant Morrison wrote a foreword in this for this. <laughs> right, right, right. Of, of course, you've got the guy from My Chemical <laughs> Romance, like begging you as his idol. Of course, you're gonna write a foreword. Yeah, I know. But I know. You've got little things like this. Like you've got. You know, and, I, and I'm a type of guy, I've been reading comics for a long time and watching movies and things like that. I can fill in the blank. I don't mind doing that. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> mind about filling in the blank about the history between, you know, Space Boy and his robot. But when it's every goddamn character in this book, knowing I'm probably not going to get any of these answers. And a lot of things happen for no reason. Right? Like, there's all these forgotten characters that look really cool. But then, after all it's said and done, it's like, what the hell did it... It's nothing but a big blur. And I hate that because I remember really liking this book. It's not, you know, the art is still wonderful. It's beautiful. Um, and I think I want I want more. Mm -hmm. I want it more story. I want it more. And you can't do that. You can't do that within six issues. You can't do that within 12 issues and then taking a 10-year break in between storylines. So it's very hard for me to go back into this with like, man, this was amazing. This was great. At best, this was okay. Because I've read all these kind of things before, and like I said, I get it. He's trying to be witty with a lot of the, a lot of the characters and the way they're portrayed, and a lot of the humor, a lot of the and cliffhangers. Edgy. I wouldn't say necessarily edgy. It's not really too edgy, um, but like you know, you've got the mom who's just a mannequin and like no explanation, right? As to why, yeah. Other than like I said, I was it feels about that it feels yeah. like. It feels like he wrote a lot of cool ideas, right? And of course, and then, Gabriel, and then, and Gabriel Ba is like, I got you, man. I know what, I got it. I got it. Mannequin mom, intestines, brain, I got you. Oh, he and got then, it all right. And then nothing happened. And maybe I just wanted a little more a little substance. More. Yeah. Because in the end, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't blown away like I was years ago. Uh, yeah, I do agree that it's hard to do a story like this that doesn't continue directly after. Yes. You know, I think, I think that the hiatus really damages something like this. Cause if you leave this interesting story, we, it's okay to do a story like this and leave holes. Yes. And, and be like, Oh, well there's all these things I just don't understand. We, we're not touching yet because then you're, 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 you're giving the audience a promise that you will. Right. So mm -hmm. even if you're still focusing on all these characters, there's like, you, you're giving them a lot of room to play with as far as like places to kind of come back later and fill in those holes for you, to, for the audience to know, like why, why these children were there in the first place. Like, what's yes. that right. about? And, I and don't think... what's the mom about? And what, what's, what's this, like, these powers are for? Why would this person even care about these kids in the first place? You know, et cetera. Why so did on. this space alien come to Earth anyways as an inventor? <laughs> exactly. So, like, you know, there's there, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it, it, it is a problem when you're not continuing it directly after or when you don't have a promise to continue because mm -hmm. then you have an empty story without all the stuff or yeah. if you don't have an idea of where this is going if you don't have an yeah. overall plan then what's the point of telling you know introducing us to a bunch of new characters that are kind of oh this is really cool and he's really quirky because he's got a head on top of a gorilla which whatever you know i, I get that i'm not that anal about it i'm just talking about every fucking character in this story was there are so many questions and i don't you know he never gave us any answers. Um, so, do you, think, do you think that was on purpose? That he was hoping that those people would be seeking those answers and want them, and that would create that urge to buy the next set of issues or the next I don't volume. Know that he feel he's the kind of person that would feel that way. I think like, when I, I think read about him interviews and stuff, it doesn't seem like yeah. he's the kind of person that would like lay out that hype for something. No. But at the end of the day, I mean, he writes, but I'm assuming that there's also, you know, people who be like, hey, the, you know, whoever at, uh, what is it, Dark Horse, be like, 
you know, let's, we'll leave it like this. We're not going to do too much editing because this will create, you know, excitement and people want to read what's next. I don't know. Maybe I'm just <sighs> killed. I, I want to say, I mean, obviously it borrows from X-Men and Grant Morrison's yeah. Doom Patrol. So that, both of those were kind of long game uh, titles, right? Like, yes. the, like the writers knew what they were, it was going to be, at the end of the day, you were going to read 35 issues. And a lot of those little plot holes that weren't making sense at first, especially Doom Patrol, would start making sense. Maybe, but this was just all over the place. Like, there was way too much. It wasn't just three or four dangling plot lines. It was a mystery within all these characters. And I kind of, you know, I like that from time to time. I like it when it's just a few characters. You get... But when it's the entire cast and then the entire storyline that just... Yeah, like, seriously, because... (laughs) It felt like like these events happen with any rhyme or reason. They just happen because these kids were born. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe I don't know. <laughs> right, I I don't know. Um, so yeah, kind of weird. So that that's where that's that's where I stand with Umbrella Academy. Um, beautiful artwork. Oh, it, it really beautiful artwork. is. Uh, really cool and hip story, but just not not for me. And that that yeah, kind of so sucks. Omar, I really liked it other, at first. Did you read the other volumes? Or oh, I yeah. know that volume three comes out this year at some time. Uh, but... Yeah, that's been coming out. I think issue two just dropped. Yeah, I've read both of them. Yeah. Uh, the okay. other one's about time travel, JFK, spoilers. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I assumed when he said he was, when number five said in this book something about the uh, assassination of John F. Kennedy, and then they mention it in the beginning as well, assuming that it never happened. So I thought maybe seeing that twice like that would have something to do with further volumes. I think um, when I first read those, though, I, I didn't like volume two as much as I liked this volume. Okay. Um, I thought this volume was better. but And once again, you know, it's just my opinion. Everything's well, you're going to make it real easy to give away this free copy, Omar. Never's <laughs> like, oh, I'm freaking read this damn thing. He even not like no, it. <laughs> I, I, really, I really think everybody should read it because everybody's entitled to their own opinion. There are people, you know, there's shit I like that other people can't stand. So I get it. Everybody it's everybody true. should read it. It's, it's you know, these two ladies really, really liked it. So I'll, I'll tell, tell you, it was fun nice it's not without its problems, but it's fun. Oh, yeah, it's, it's fun. A, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of like. Story. Like okay, so we went when we read Next Wave Agents of Hate. It was a fun read. It was interesting. It was quirky, like this was, you know, a lot of tongue in cheek and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd read, you know. Well, I think but, Next Wave Next Wave was a little different, right? Because you were already using established characters from characters, the Marvel universe, yeah, and them. you did have a beginning and an ending. This was just yeah. like the beginning of something that could have been a great monthly series. Um. I don't know. It, I, w- did they I, just I wish want to do six issues, or what was the reasoning behind not making it a monthly thing and making it a limited it's, series? It's Dark Horse. So that's the way oh, they did okay. everything. Hellboy's on the same way. BPRD. They're all done in mini series, so they sell better. Gotcha. Uh, and it won awards, right? Didn't it win an Eisner Award for best new limited series when it came out? Um, I don't know. I, I think can't so. remember. I can't remember. Um, but Newsarama loved it. Flawless, stylish, imaginative. Uh, so <laughs> there you go, Newsarama. Those guys are still around. Uh, <laughs> does oh, right, that's so a good question. Does that make me less excited for the show? Yeah, let's talk about the show and what we want. Oh, I'm excited about it. Because I, I think I know what I want. Yeah. Um. No, because I think the show can fill in a lot of. Pl- <laughs> A lot of the things I was missing from here, because TV shows will. have to be different. You can't be just crazy and no. write nonsense and expect people to follow it weekly or whatever. Is Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. Netflix. Okay, yeah. so it will be dropped all at once. Never mind. Um, yeah, from what I'm seeing, it's um, um, I don't see Gerard Way's like involvement in this in particular, um, and I'm, it's not saying so far how many episodes we can expect. No. But, uh, I'll I'll be interested to see how they do this because I feel like if you're not going to fill in some of the holes and add some extra fluff or info to this, then it should just be a mini series. That's it. Yeah. Like, without continuing or doing anything else. But at the same time, I think they have a great opportunity here to take this and really just kind of do whatever with it. 
they like really stick, do. Stick, stick to your main stuff. Like, do you honor what's in the book? But go ahead and add some stuff into it. And make it in something different. You know, mm-hmm. just just take this and really just make this whole other universe for it. Because, you know, you don't have this like established canon that you have to adhere to with this. No. You know, so you can really just d- do what you want as long as it, it keeps it the same core parts in it. So um, I'm really interested to see what they're going to do. With it, cause I think the cast is really interesting, too. There's so some got Ellen Page. Um, Robert Mary Sheen. J. Blige, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and that's cool. Who does, she, who does she play? The mom? Tata. Oh, okay. Uh, a ruthless and unorthodox hit woman who travels through time to kill assigned targets. I like the huh. comic. The female is, or the character is female. So I guess the uh, we haven't, yeah, we haven't read that person, have we? I think that's from the second book if they're okay. talking about time traveling assassins. So, uh, so maybe you, we'll have both of it. Do you think they'll start having um, a combination of, or you, maybe they'll combine the two storylines or something in this first episode? Uh, it's not I a bad idea. I don't know, it because would, he also has little short stories, too, that are in the back. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I, read, I saw those, too. But yeah, I mean, they have Ellen Page coming in as adult Vanya, which, I mean, tell him Paige, man. There's yeah. a, she's, that right now, to me, that's her, their most bankable star on this whole list, like, just looking at it. Um, I mean, Robert Sheehan, I know, from Misfits, um, mm-hmm. who's also in one of the Shadow Hunters. I think it was Mortal Instruments. I don't know, one of those. Yeah. The, mo- the book or the, or the movie or the TV show, I can't remember which one it was which, that he was in, but, um, yeah, I'm going to be really interested to see this cast. I'm hoping they fill it out. I think they will, because um, I think there's going to be more, I don't know, maybe some more dramatic effort put into it. So, uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of comic book TV shows coming out, I guess. Uh, yeah, which, we got that Watchmen. Man, how lucky are we? We to are. Have, it's such a different world now, too. Like, um, Not to get too off topic, but... I was listening to Seth Rogen talk on Dak Shepard's podcast, which is um, Armchair yeah. Expert. And he was talking a lot about how he grew up reading these comics. And now he's in a position where he can he can make shows about these and they're popular and people want to make those movies and make those shows. Because he's, he's um, what he did Preacher and now he's working on The Boys. Um, and although his taste may not reflect mine, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm excited for more comic book shows. I agree. To happen like it, what? How great is that? Like I get to watch Runaways. Yeah, you know, every week. Oh, I love and, Runaways. <laughs> you know, there's. I mean, there's DC's killing it on TV shows. Like we've yes, got the big two. We've got a lot of the big two, but now we can have like so much more. We and are that is yeah. so cool. We're getting so many more too, which is great. I mean, Deadly Class is coming out soon. I mean, when we were when I was doing my list of oh things I want to review coming up for Reels Talk, I thought, oh my gosh, look at all the comic book stuff coming out. Oh, absolutely. That we can talk about this is I, insane. I had no idea that Watchmen was so close to being wrapped up and done. Well, when I saw that preview on the Golden Globes, I almost I was like, whoa! I just thought it was still in development. I had no idea they'd actually film stuff, and here we go. There are the characters. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting how they're doing that. Because, um, well, I I mean, you, well, you've read it, right, Maddie? But it's, yeah. it's interesting the way they're going with that story. It's like an, uh, I guess, an alternate reality of where the the plan worked. I don't know. That's all I've heard about it. I know I know very little as to what they're gonna do. So, be interesting to find out. Um. So, oh man, why the last man? Is that, yep, that's is that also coming? coming out. Yes, because what? uh, what's her name is in it. Uh, oh God, Jodie Foster. Jodie really? Foster. Really? Yes, she plays one of the doctors, right? Yes, I'm gonna have to IMDb that because I don't want to be oh, wrong. But now I've got to um, read Why the Last Man. We got oh, a lot of things to read. Yes, how about, I got um, all my husbands. I'll read those. How about we read <laughs> uh, Deadly Class for next week? I think that's a good one. That's uh, a. Yeah, okay. Issues one through twenty. I read 20. the first volume. I didn't care that much, so I need to read more than just the first volume. Mm-hmm. I think issue twenty one, the first so it's the first five trades. The first the first hard cover covers all the way up until nineteen or no seventeen. But issue twenty one is the big to me like season ender and I think that's where they will end season one of Deadly Cloud. It they have to. And to me it's like one of the big the biggest cliffhangers I've ever read in comic <sighs> books. So I, I'm excited to see what you two think. Um, but yes. before we talk about that, what would you ladies rate this book that 
um, Umbrella Academy. What would you all give it? Kind of wish we had done a rating before I had talked. Yeah, uh, before you gave us all your. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I can. No, it up. doesn't change your mind. You you still like it. That's that's your taste. It's true. It's true. It's true. Um, I think that I would give it a. I give it a seven point five out of ten. Okay. Yeah, I say seven. Seven. I think it's really good. I think it's super worth reading. The mm-hmm. art's beautiful. It's a very inter- interesting uh, story, very interesting characters, but I do think there's some holes. I think it would I, it would rate higher if... Well, I, I might change my mind once I read more. And yes. once it's more is done. Because I think right now I just need I need more to hold on to. I need more of it going Wait, somewhere. You came at it at the right time, Maddie, because everybody else has been waiting 10 years to read more yes, Umbrella Academy. Yes, I know. <laughs> You come in and like, I'm done with trade paperback one. I'll go read it monthly now. <laughs> Let's do it. So we got um, seven and the 7.5. I will give this a six out of 10 purely for the art. The art is the saving grace of this book to me. It's beautiful. Uh, the, the story, eh, it's cute. Yeah. So <laughs> that's my opinion. What the hell do I know? <laughs> uh, why don't we take the time now to give it away? Oh yeah, to somebody that wants to totally read it or to give it away to somebody that has never read it. <coughs> what if, Amanda's going to ask a question, so everybody get ready in the chat. First person to answer will win the book. So, ah, okay. Amanda, what is yep. the question? All right. Um, it can't be about My Chemical Romance. That's what I was going to be about. It's not fair. <laughs> so I think she should be allowed to, Omar. Oh I my gosh, fine. Be Everybody to go to Google.com want. really quick before Amanda <laughs> has her question. Um, can it be a guessing game? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, let's see. Ooh, Diane Lane's going to be in it? Yes, okay. Diane Lane, not Jodie Foster. That's what it was. Oh, okay. How did you get those two I, mixed up? I swear I thought I saw something about her being in it. I don't know. It was a long time ago. They could have changed the cast. But okay, Lashana okay. Lynch is going to be in from Captain Marvel, and she's playing uh, Monica. Rambo, right? In Captain Agent, Marvel? Agent 555? Is that who she's playing? All right. Ask your okay. question, Amanda. What's your question? Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Everybody Google fingers. Ready? I've got, okay. What is the name of the album that the My Chemical Romance song Helena is from? Am I allowed to participate? Okay. No. You can't, you can't win so this year. I, I have it. I wanted to pour root beer on it. Somebody said at least he's not <laughs> pouring root beer on it like Jess does with his reviews. So the question is... What is the name of the album that the song Helena from My, My Chemical Romance is off of? <laughs> do, 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 I dressed do, as her for Halloween that year, too, so that's how much I loved. <laughs> Man, I used and to cut up my t-shirts and like put safety pins in them. My My oh. Chemical <laughs> You and me would have been the best emos. <laughs> I, well, what's funny, they were the only like, emo-ish band. Ha-ha! Lucas... He got it right. Yay. Okay. You have won. So now what does he need to do, Omar? So we can send it to him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> three shears. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, okay. So congratulations, you. Lucas. Love you, Philip. <laughs> Philip, a little too slow on the Google fingers, my friend. Um, I, damn it. I cannot remember our email address. I think it's near mint con. At gmail.com. At gmail.com, but give me one second. I'll write it down in the chat. I want to double check. If not, I'll give you my personal email address. Which I don't well, we can care. also, if you want to message on our Facebook page or um, our Instagram too, that's we fine. We can get to, yeah. And we'll get oh, yeah. to you. Too many yeah, we'll... words to type. <laughs> well, I like to make it hard, I'm really. imagining like a whole sheep themed album. <laughs> yeah, me too. Dude, why aren't you guys sheep. doing. Copy and paste like my boy Three Lucas did. Please <laughs> revenge. <laughs> Copy and paste that shit. Uh, awesome. Let's see. Maybe Congrats. we have it in our description. Do we have our email on here? <laughs> God, I no. suck so bad. All right. So, wait. What if they don't have – you know what? I'm just going to type my email. You can it's, email. It's, it's nearmintcon at gmail.com. I just went to our Google Drive. Oh, and thanks, Amanda. You're welcome. So, our email address is, type it in there for us so that Lucas can email us 
with his information, and we will get him his copy of Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite. Nearmancon at gmail.com. Congratulations, yes. Lucas. Congratulations. I gave up when it was an MCR question. <laughs> Thank you, Make Havoc, as well as you should. This boy is knowing a good You could even ask Siri. Siri. I love, I love how pretentious Omar is when it comes to like regular people things. I know. Right? He, I he, am not he's pretentious. Like, he how doesn't get comics or anything, but when it comes to like regular people, so he's like, <laughs> you watch regular TV that the majority of the people in the world yeah, watch? right? <laughs> Oh, is, that, is that how I sound to you? Yeah. Oh, you know, I was, yeah. I was, are you talking about the Mindy Project again? <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, okay, Maddie. everybody should be making fun of that. So is New Girl. So oh, is, oh my god. Oh my you, just, you know what? I'm ending the broadcast. I'm kicking love- both of you off. <laughs> this is the Omar show now. <laughs> this is why I asked Jess on because he has no uh, idea what the hell you two are talking about either. Ah, she got Devil Dinosaur. No, you don't. That's not really Devil Dinosaur. Okay. Lloyd said he was a simple plan kind of guy. My brother was too. Simple plan's also good. I'm actually a Fallout Boy person, but I've met them six times. Wow. I loved them. I love Patrick Stump. Yeah, because she stalks them and knows where they're going. That's not true. They just happen to play a lot of shows. <laughs> that's that's the way that Amanda does being a fan, okay? That's right. That's me being a fan. <laughs> oh, sure. When I do it, it's called stalking. <laughs> no, I don't stalk as much as my sister does, but that's another story. That is another story, and you are calling <laughs> your sister out. I hope she doesn't watch the show. Amy, if you're watching, I love you, and I'm sorry, but she now is like a legal person for a... Uh, talent agency in new york city and they have like they represent a bunch of people i love like sebastian stan so i'm hoping to get a invite to avengers 4 premiere amy hook me up thanks <laughs> oh that's my daughter she's hanging out hey. <laughs> that, that is a young reader that is a very young reader yes Daddy thought he could read Umbrella Academy 2, and he's like, nope. And he's opened it up, and he said, this is not kid appropriate. <laughs> Lyndon, stay away from this book for a long time until you listen to – your mom makes you listen to all that My Chemical Romance stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so for next week, we are going to be reading Deadly Class, issues 1 through 21, so mm-hmm. the first five trade paperbacks. Okay. Uh, or if you have the hardcover, it's the first deluxe hardcover, and then the next, the fifth trade paperback. So yes, and there will be huge spoilers in that one, and I really hate ruining that story for everybody, for anybody that has not read it. So I would strongly suggest reading it. But yeah. I mean, if if you don't care, like my boy Philip, <laughs> come whatever. on in anyways. Come on in I'm and a join us. Queen myself, I love a good spoiler. So good, yeah. Everybody, welcome. Come, come on back next Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yes, uh, yes Lloyd, there is the, the pink one is the oversized hardcover, but that ends in issue 17. We're going to go all the way to issue 21, which is the perfect place to end it. I don't know why they didn't wait an extra six months to do it oversized hardcover, but whatever. Yeah. I didn't assign the hardcovers. Um, yes, issue 21 will be the issue we're, we're going to be talking about 1 through 21. So I'm excited to see what you two ladies think. You may end up hating it. Or not liking it, like me with Umbrella Academy, and like, you know, and then I'm gonna be the only one like, oh, it was so good though. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay, so I was gonna take the time right before Maddie started making fun of me to 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 say congratulations to her because she recently yeah. got engaged, and 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 then she interrupted and made fun of me, and I'm like, you know what? Oh, come Vince, on, I do out of love. You would do the same to me. It's I always do the same to you. You are right. She congratulations. Got congratulations. I don't have a ring, so I can't just do like this. Yeah, that's pretend. pretentious. Rings yeah. are pretentious. <laughs> I propose, so that's how that works. That that's is really right. cool. Look at those gender roles. I love it. Um, that is really cool. Now, I, I did ask her the question. I was like, was there, was there a slim chance that he could have said no because you were in front of a lot of people dressed as cosplayers from Final Fantasy VII? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that would have been a horrible. Nah, I'm good. I found pass. somebody <laughs> cosplaying from Final Fantasy VI, so I'm gonna go that route. There's there a it. radio over there, so <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I was more of a Celis fan from Final Fantasy VI. Oh man, I love Celis. She's my favorite. Yes, she is the greatest. What's up, Scoundrel Gaming? Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so uh, people are saying. 
Congratulations. Thank you. Why the hell would you say no to that? Thanks, Philip. That is a yeah. hell of a compliment. That Philip. is a hell of a compliment. So, <laughs> yeah. Big big congratulations to Maddie. That's exciting. Thank you. Now, yeah. now you can be boring like the rest of us married people. Yeah. <laughs> Having your kid, a life to my kid show up. Have great. your kid run around in front of you. You have a nervous <laughs> breakdown because you want to talk about Deadly Class or whatever the hell we're going to be reviewing then. Uh, Umbrella Academy Volume Four. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Anything else you ladies wanted to cover before we sign off for tonight? Um. No, I think that's it. Uh, we are going to be, Omar and I are going to be doing a review of Deadly Class Episode 1 on Saturday on Reels Talk. So if you want to hear oh, yeah. our thoughts about that first episode of Deadly Class, which premieres on January 16th on Sci-Fi, uh, which is also a Tuesday. So pick and choose if you want to watch us or watch <laughs> no, that. No, why would you advertise for them? We'll they, get enough, <laughs> they get enough press as it is. It's Sci-Fi. It's true, I do true, true. The only thing I do worry about that show is that it's a sci-fi show, right? And they tend to get canceled a lot. I don't know. Magicians is on season five. Yeah, right? I feel like a lot of sci-fi shows continue for Z a Nation is still going long on time. Mm-hmm. Because like Magicians. Warehouse Maybe it's... 13 went on for a long time. Um, yeah. that's, that's sci-fi, right? It is, um, yeah. Um, because uh, Magicians, yeah, that's what I watch, and that's still yeah, on. Yeah, Magicians is still going strong oh, somehow. Gosh. I always worry about sci-fi just as a channel. I worry, I worry that Me people too. are watching the channel. I agree. Is, um, is that something I can make fun of YouTube for watching, or is that like geeky? Is it normal it's, stuff? But just is geeky, but it's also it's like angst. It is very angsty. <laughs> it's very yeah, angsty. I tried. I read the book too. I was like, I'll just watch the TV show. <laughs> I'm getting a comic too, like a prequel comic oh, or that's something. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, like make cool. make havoc loves magicians. Charlie Rogers agrees with me. He's worried about yeah. sci-fi. Yeah, so. it's, it's worrisome because it's like a specialty channel on cable, and now we get all when you can have those kind of shows on Netflix and Hulu. It's like, you know, yeah, I would worry but about I, that too. Hopefully, the 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 comic book fans will represent and watch it. So I agree, we all, but we also need more uh, normal folks. Remember, like the people yeah. I well, make remember, fun of. Russo brothers are producing it, so that's a benefit. Right, the Is name it? alone. Anytime I, I, well, anytime I hear producers, it's like, oh yeah, give me a check, sure. Oh, yeah, script, know, script looks good. Script looks good, yeah. sure. Where's my check? That's I all know. I ever hear. But I, I know mean, they're putting their their name on it so that they can draw a uh, more regular crowd, I guess, because you know everyone really? knows them from. Yeah, I think from everybody Avengers. knows their name that is a geek. I don't think regular people know who the Russo brothers are. Right? It's not like saying the Cohen brothers or saying. You know Steven Spielberg, things like that. Yet, yeah, because I, I think know. all they've done, all they've done are comic book uh, movies, correct? I mean, if I, am I mistaken? Show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but maybe one day, and who the hell, you know, maybe maybe they'll get enough views. Uh, but let's see, Magicians is I, but too rapey. Uh, <laughs> That's creepy. Yeah, Sharknado, you got that. You got a good point there. <laughs> Sometimes it can get a little. Yeah, well, too rapey. Yeah. Yeah. Loves okay. the Nation. That's on there too. That's based That's on the novels, a... isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, the, the thing I worry about with Deadly Class is if they go on too, too long, seasons. like, yeah. we're going to get some filler episodes. Or we oh, could yeah. go the route of Game of Thrones where they do their own thing, and then Rick Remender was like, okay, this is where it's going to end. I hope so, that's where it goes, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I guess we'll see what the showrunners decide to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really pumped about that Why the Last Man. I thought that was just a rumor. No, yeah. I think of a whole cast – it's been a rumor for many, many years, ever since the book ended. So I that's... think it. I think it began production sometime in August or September. I think something along those lines. And is it FX? I think so. Yeah, which I'm still interested in how that's going to work. I'm guessing that Disney's going to keep all those airing and stuff. Now that they own them. Those channels. Is Omar still watching live action at comic adaptations? He already knows he doesn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, Clark Nato. I like some comic book adaptations. Um, you like Daredevil? My... I did. I love Daredevil. I thought yeah. Daredevil was great. I, Daredevil. I wish I wish they had had a fourth season. There's a petition with over 100,000 signatures to have it put back on the air that even uh, uh, Vincent Nefranio even put it out there for people to sign. So, those <laughs> poor, Sorry. Those, <laughs> those poor souls. Have they not met Disney? Wishful thinking. I know <laughs> Disney doesn't. They're Disney like doesn't count out too. Yeah, thousand. we don't count out of petitions. We have like you realize that if you look at the 
schedule for next year's movie list, all of them are pretty much owned by Disney. <laughs> Whether or not they be Disney, Fox, it's like, it's insane. Uh, make Havoc, it says, you guys make my drive from work better on a Tuesday night. Oh, that's Thanks. appreciated. Thank you. Are you uh, watching us and texting and driving as you uh, as you? <laughs> hey, I'm not one to that's judge. Like what my husband does. I'm not. I'm not one to judge. Uh, Please don't. Don't. <laughs> but, be, but before you wreck, don't forget to hit that like button. Yeah, <laughs> oh my gosh! Like and subscribe button. It can never be said that I do not care about people. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining yes, us. thank you. Would one of you ladies like to sign us off? And again, congratulations, Maddie. I yes, caught you with, while you're yawning. I'm sorry we were boring. <laughs> That's <you>. fine. No, <laughs> no, no. But yeah, uh, thank you guys, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we can't wait to talk next Tuesday about Deadly Class. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends and tell them that you listen to us and that you, they make, you know, maybe they'll make their drive better at home. Yeah. So, Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, I don't remember our catchphrase, so Amanda's going to have to say it. Time to <laughs> right. So, all right. Remember, guys, um, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. <laughs>